On this episode, Christian wants to believe. Today, I just want to see a UFO. The UFO is extremely strange. It's animating, but it's too fast. And it may not be entirely friendly. Oh, it's coming towards me. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian, this is LazyDiffs Academy. This is the basic shmup tutorial. Uh, this is the cow shmup, today we are doing LABs. Right, we have a ship and it fires at things, but we are so lonely. We need some things to shoot at and this is gonna be the goal for today. We want to spawn an enemy. Spawn an enemy. Um, I have, I have, I have prepared something. Um, what's this? Delete it. And of course, as always, down in Jubilee, you can download the sprite, and you can also download, you know, the code before and at the end of the episode. And at the end of the episode, the code will have that sprite as well, so um, you can just download it from there. Uh, but yeah, uh, here's my my little little bit of a wait, 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 wait. You need to select this frame first, and then you can dra drag and drop it in here. Oh no, uh, that's not good. That's, that's not good. You can you can saw some of the pixels were overwritten. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We can actually delete all of this stuff. This is just no longer relevant. Get rid of this. Yes, yes. Okay, and then we can drag and drop uh, the sprite in here. Now I want to make the sprite a little bigger so I can nudge it closer to the edge. To the edge. Always the same jokes. That's why you tune in, right? <laughs> okay, so this is a bit of a weird collection of sprites. Um, this one was actually, um, again, this is inspired by a, a popcorn enemy from, uh, from GGLS3. Uh, kind of like took that sprite and kind of like did some major changes. I probably still not really comfortable with using this in my final game. Probably I want if I ever want to release my game and so forth. I want to probably like exchange the sprite with a different sprite. We're probably gonna do the kind of like a big sprite overhaul at some point. But for now, I just want to have something on the screen. I'm just thinking more about creating a system so rather than you know coming up with the final enemy designs. That's something that we're gonna think about later. Um, right, so now first let us get um, the different, these are like three sprites. And as you can see, the first sprite is symmetrical. The second sprite is no longer symmetrical because it's kind of like a rotating ship, right? And that's kind of like a big thing to also consider is like, you don't just want to have like these static enemies, right? You sometimes want to maybe have enemies that do something. And especially with a popcorn enemy that you will have tons of these sprites on the screen. There will be tons of those enemies on the screen. It's like this, it pays off to make that enemy animated. So, you know, so it, there's, the game will feel more lively. If you have like a big ship that comes up only occasionally, it's okay if we don't animate that ship because already it's a big sprite, so it will be impressive. Uh, but also, you know, it will just pop up once in a game or so. So that's not a big deal if it's that's not like, like super you know, polished and so forth. But the enemies that come up always, every time, you know, that you have tons of, those enemies you probably want to uh, invest a little bit more, more effort in and make them feel more lively. Right, so um, the second frame is, sadly, we have to use like the full frame here. Um, it's, there's like no symmetry that we can split here. Um, Again, probably you could do some tweaking maybe because some parts of the sprite are r repeating. So maybe we could like go in and start like splitting it into pieces and, and then use our system to arrange, uh, to replicate this, this middle sprite out of previous previous elements. But um, I think that's something that we're worth doing is when we have the final graphics and when we have our editor. So for now, I'm, I'm good with, with the simple solution here. And then again, the final sprite is again symmetrical. Good, so let us let us get those sprites into our system. And you know, this is a pro process that will probably speed up because it's just like, you know, looking up values and typing it in a table. Bear with me. Thank you. 
Okay, so here are my preliminary values. Let's see. Uh, we probably want to want to uh, uh, test them if they're working. Um, so this is going to be 18, 19, 20. So 18, 19, 20. Okay. So uh, 18, 19, 20, 18, 19. Okay. Uh Oh, right, 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 right. Nah, right now. No. Oh, right. We don't have a, we don't have an offset values for them. And we need to put oh, zero, zero for offset. We're going to fix it offset in a second. But for now, I just want to see, I uh, want to see uh, today. I just want to see a UFO. Really, really now. Uh, too much commas. All right. Hey, it's working. Okay, yeah, no, that, that seems actually quite okay. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. When we're mirroring them, the reflections in a, in a cockpit are not quite right. Uh, but you know what? It's good enough. It's good enough for what we're trying to do. Um, it's going to be easier to debug maybe the animation when we, uh, when we actually have the enemy on the screen because that's going to be easier than just replacing our own sprite. What I did there is I replaced our, the sprite of the of the player with the animation, but I think it's going to be just easier to spawn an enemy. Okay, so let us just just start. What what's the problem? Like, okay, so we just we're going to create an array of enemies. That's what I'm thinking, and it's going to be empty. And just like for for now, we're just going to put an enemy in there. So we're going to go add enemies, um, and then we're going to create an enemy. And we have to think about what do we need for an enemy to, to exist on our world. We're going to have, well, X, right? Uh, let's put it 64. We need a Y, and let's put it at 8, at the top of the screen, right? Do we need anything else? Well, um, let's look at some other objects that we sometimes spawn um, here in gameplay. For example, we have S, uh, we have speed X and speed Y. Maybe we need that. Maybe, uh, but we're not moving it for, for now. We just want to have a static uh, UFO for now. Uh, maybe the Sani and SI would be would be good. Just copy the system that we're already using for the shot for the animation of the shot. Um, the reason why I want to maybe reuse the system is that maybe we're going to use the same functions to animate things. Uh, you know what, let's just like do S Ani for now and then we're going to think about how to animate this later. Um, so yeah, we want to have an animation of, of, uh, of uh, frames and for now let's just like use the first frame that we have. Uh, that's going to be frame number 18 and then again we're going to Maybe add some more more fancy animations for now. I just again just trying to do anything here. Um, right, so let's then draw the enemies. Um, where are we drawing them? Where are we drawing them? And here we're drawing the particles. So the question is whether the enemies should be above or below the shots. I think it makes sense if the shots are drawn on top of the enemies. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go for because right because the shot might intersect the enemy, and I think it will, will, will look weird if the shots are flying beneath the enemies. I think if they're above the enemies, I think that that might 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 be might be more make more sense for e n all enemies do. And now I mean it's gonna be pretty easy, right? We're gonna have um, MSPR. Uh, we're going to basically use this code that we're already doing here. Uh, we're going to take the E as any and just we're just going to take the first entry, not thinking about animation. We're just taking the first entry for our, from our animation array and we're, put, we're using this as the sprite that we are about to draw. And then E dot X, E dot Y. This might be it. Oh, there it is. We have an enemy! Hey, enemies! Woo! Um, immediately. Immediately, there is a problem. D do you spot the problem? Yeah. Okay. 
So when we're flying left and right, you see that the enemy is also flying left and right, kind of. But how can that be? We are not animating the enemy. Well, it's not the enemy that's flying left and right. It's the ground beneath the enemy that's flying left and right. So it seems like the enemy is going with the ship, kind of. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's going with the ship. That's kind of like, that's why I said, like when we're going sideways, we're going to make our life complicated. <laughs> this is the complication. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah, so the problem that we have right now is that um, we uh, we kind of scrolling. Not we don't just have to scroll the background. I think we also have to scroll all of the enemies. And actually, if you think about it, you also have to. We haven't noticed this, but we also probably have to scroll the explosions as well, the particles as well. Everything that is kind of like supposed to be attached to the ground uh, or supposed to be backgrounds to some extent is needs to be scrolling with the background so really just the player and the shots are gonna stay where they are everything else is gonna get scrolled together with the background that's that doesn't feel that doesn't feel good that 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 that, that I received some critical damage from that <laughs> um there's different ways of doing this. Um, one maybe simple solution would be to, where is it? Um, yeah, we're just gonna do the X scroll. We can just do the X scroll, right? We can just go plus minus X scroll uh, when we're drawing it. Where is it? Enemies, yeah. Plus X scroll, let's try that. Does that work? Yeah. It basically works. Now the enemy is kind of like it's hovering in, in front of us, but it also scrolls with the background. The, uh, there's some problems. There's some slight problems with that as well, though. Uh, and that is here. So okay, if the position of the enemy is non-integer, uh, let's go 0 0.5. You see how the enemy is now like wiggling a little bit. It's kind of like not synced up. It's not synced up with the background, right? It, it seems to wiggle against the background. And that is, yeah, that's kind of like a unfortunate side effect um, of this specific solution that we used here right now. So the problem is now that um, because of the subpixel value, uh, the threshold at which the um, enemy snaps to the next pixel is different from the threshold at which the background snaps to the next pixel. And uh, that makes them like move sideways uh, in a desynced kind of way. Uh, we might have a solution for this later on, but for now, I think that's it's good for now. Um, we're probably gonna apply a different system to all of this stuff um, later on. Um, something else also that we need to keep in mind is that this X scroll thing that is that will also obviously make problems with collision detection because we also have to factor this in when we do collision detection. So, oh man, what? And now uh, there's again we have different solution for this and probably people in the comments will be will be suggesting different solution for this um it's going to be a bit of a mess and by doing this horizontal scroll we made our life a lot more complicated than we thought but here we are now all right so for now let us move on to um let us animate things because like right now it's just like this this static enemy i just want maybe to to, to cycle through the animation that's i think that's maybe a good start for doing stuff with the enemy. Mm, now, um, we could do this immediately here in the draw function, and I'm not sure if we, if we maybe should or not. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, for now, let us not create a, well, eventually we're probably we're go gonna have to create a specific, right? We're gonna have to take, create a specific update function for the enemies. Fine, fine, for, uh, uh, let's call this function, function do enemies. And it's gonna be like do shots. We're gonna loop through all of the enemies for E and all enemies to end. Um, and then an update function uh, down here. Uh, when we're doing the shots, we're also gonna do the enemies. Uh, actually, it is, let's do the enemies first. Uh, at last. Um, I want to do the shots first because maybe 
we're going to move the shots, and maybe there's going to be a collision, maybe the enemy explodes. So if the enemy starts firing themselves, they first get exploded before they fire. I want to kind of like lean towards the player. Um, right. So um, let me let me take a look. I'm not really sure how to do animation. Again, I want maybe at some point use a, a consolidated animation function. Um, what are we doing in the when we're doing the shots? So we have this uh, S ani and we have the S i. Uh, this S i is an index, right? That's like the frame at which we are, on, are at right now. Um, do, will that work for the enemy? Are we animating this here? Yeah, yeah, we're animating this here. You know what? Let's just copy this code over. Uh, and then we're gonna, because this is just like a preliminary solution for the enemies. We're gonna eventually think about enemies. In a, we're gonna sit down and, and think about where we can collapse things. For now, I'm just good. Uh, just using, just using, uh, reusing the code we already have and just duplicating it, whatever. And then, and then we're gonna think about smart solutions later on. Um, so we're gonna do uh, if E S I. Uh, sprite index is greater than a number of, then we're going to reset it to one. Okay, yeah, that's good. So this is the animation. And then when we're drawing the enemy, we're going to do it in the draw game function. And here is where we're drawing the enemies. Yeah, right. And so we can just like use the same, same code as we have here. Except E, not S, right? <sighs> It's not animating. It's not animating because we don't have an animation for the enemy. So 18, 19, 20. It's animating, but it's too fast. <laughs> and also it's wiggling. We have to fix the offset. Um, so let us make it slower. Yeah, see? Um, there is an offset problem. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. So um, let us actually, when we draw the enemies, let's just draw the center of the enemy. I think, I think that's a good idea. Um, so when we're drawing the enemies, we're gonna do a P set. We're gonna set a pixel. Uh, that is gonna be, <laughs> now, now we have to always carry the E scroll with us. <laughs> oh man, again, we're gonna, there's gonna be a better solution for this later on, but for now, I just, I'm just like, I'm just acknowledging that this is a problem. All right, so this is now the center of the enemy. You can tell that on the top left corner and there's like a little pixel that is the center of the enemy. And now I want to um, set the offsets, uh, fix the offsets for all, for all of those animations. First of all, I want maybe the center to be at um, in the middle of the sprite. Now you can see, it's barely see there's a red, there's a red pixel there. And then I think for this one, we need nine for the center sprite. Nope, that didn't fix it. Uh, 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 uh. Really, it didn't fix it. Maybe it's uh, maybe it then we need the eight for the nine for the twenty. That didn't work either. I'm confounded. Let's go nine here. Oh, that's that's very bad. That's that's obviously wrong so maybe 999 nine, nine, like this yes <laughs> okay so, you know sometimes you figure these things by trial and error i'm gonna reduce everything by one that seems good and then i'm gonna go eight in the other direction right and let's go seven i think seven feels better see now it seems like the dot is kind of in the center again we don't really have a center for all our sprites um, but that little dot seems center-ish, maybe left to the center. Maybe that's something that is going to set up as a rule because we don't have a center column for our sprites. Whenever the sprite is an even number of, um, of pixels, we pick the left pixel, <laughs> just, just as a rule. Okay, good. So we now have this enemy. I'm kind of, well, it doesn't look centered, right? But that makes sense because it's, it's you know, we have this chronic background, right? Um, that's when we spawn the enemy. Let me let me spawn the enemy a bit further down because I think it's a little bit too high. Um, so let's go 16. 
and then also maybe 74, you know. Yeah, that seems, seems more centered, cool. Um, maybe we should also fix the reflection. The reflection is <laughs> it's not good. Let's fix the reflection. Um, so 21 will be our fixed sprite. And the problem is that we kind of have, f funny enough, in this case, we it's kind of like easy because we already have the left side of the reflection. So we can just take this out, right? That's going to be the thing that we need to paste on every, um, every canopy of um, the UFOs that are mirrored. So we're going to get like the second part of the reflection. So this is going to be 1766. So 1766 uh, is going to be width 2 and height 3. And the offsets, we don't know about the offsets. We're going to figure the offsets later on and there's going to be no mirroring here. And then we are going to put this, that's going to be 21. I'm going to put this and this in here. So again, this is like this last entry in, in this long line of, of numbers where it specifies the next sprite that gets uh, drawn kind of like recursively. So we draw a sprite and then you can put another sprite on top. And that's what we're doing with a 21 here. So we're putting this uh, another sprite on top. There's a problem. There is a pro always a problem. I will probably get a comma somewhere, obviously, obviously. Right. Uh, yeah, you can see you can see the little thing popping up. So now we need to position it better. So it's like minus four and minus two, something like this. No. Uh, two, not minus two. No. Minus two, four. Uh, almost, almost, almost. Minus one, four. Hey! Nice, nice, nice. This works. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to do. Uh, just a little, you know, just showing you the process of how I would do these, the kind of, kind of work with the system. Again, we're going to probably at some point do a pass on the, on, we're going to create our tool that allows us to do this a bit more efficiently. But for now, I think just to show you how to do this manually, I think it's kind of like, it's a good idea, right? Good. So now we have an enemy, it animates. Let us go through our list of things that we need to do. Uh, we did spawn an enemy, so that's good. The enemy, enemy needs to move somehow. Uh, and the enemy needs to be, uh, shoot a bullet and the, you, you need to be able to hit the enemy somehow. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and this is kind of like the problem here, right? It's like now we're getting into this like, wait, what are we doing? Like the animation system was already, but yeah, I can kind of figure it out and we can maybe uh, use kind of like a function that does this for every object. But now, what are we doing here? What Like, how do we move the enemies in the previous, uh, in the basic schmuck tutorial, we had like a function that had like different types of enemies and like a f huge if then uh, solution. And then depending on what kind of enemy there is, we would move it differently. <sighs> but now we kind of have to maybe s create a whole different system for that. So uh, let's let's create a new, new little thing here. Takeaways, take ways some things that we notice like as we develop this this first iteration we need to like keep in mind something x scroll big pita i'm hungry uh i would love to have a pita <laughs> um so we have to, have to maybe deal with x scroll but also again um uh, how enemy behave you're, like how are we going to go about doing enemy behavior for a lot of enemies? We don't want to code every enemy by manual, do we? Like it's that's kind of like weird, right? For now, let us um, do. Let us just move. Do movement. Uh, we had S, X, and S, Y. So let's. Why don't we just like repeat this? And you can already tell we are repeating all this code. So we might actually maybe reuse some of that code, right? Uh, but for now, I just want to make the enemy move. Uh, so when we're spawning the enemy, sx equals 
zero as y equals minus one, right? So just giving them the enemy some uh, movements and now it didn't work, right? Because we're using s, we're using s in this in this loop, but here we're using e, so every time we use an s, we need to change it to e. I think that's a good idea to do that actually. Bye-bye, <laughs> enemy, goodbye. <laughs> it needs to be one positive. Oh, it's coming towards me. <laughs> All right, it's coming slowly now. But the funny thing is now, because it's scrolling at speed uh, minus one, minus two is actually the, the speed at, of the background. Now it seems like it's glued to the background, but it's moving, right? But it's, <laughs> but it's just moving the same speed as the background. The moving background adds, adds just like a lot of like weird effects that I kind of like, 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 like. Um, right, so if you want to, to move towards us, 0.5 is already pretty fast, I feel like. It feels like, whoa, I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated by this, by the brashness of this enemy. Uh, oh, by the way, I also wanted to show you this. Uh, so if, let's say we set it to 0.2 and we're gonna set this to 0.1. You see how now the enemy is really like, it feels like it's not really planted into, into the background. Like if we want to create enemies that are, for example, ground enemies, then we definitely want to make sure that they are scrolling sideways with synced up with the background. Uh, although I've seen even like, you know, commercial shmups not getting this right, like having like this jittery motion against the background. I, maybe we can just get away with not doing it. I'm not really sure. And let's just put this, put this down as a takeaway. Um, enemy scrolling in sync with BG. That's kind of like the X scroll. Pro that's kind of like problem of the X scroll. It's kind of like um, belongs belongs to that. Okay, but you know what? We had such long episodes in the past, but today's episode maybe is going to be a bit shorter. Let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Right, and the reason why I want to do the doggy zone now is because there's an obvious next step. There are some obvious next steps, and I want you to experiment with this. I want you to figure this out. So we have an enemy and we can move this around. I want you to code an enemy behavior, just hard code it for now. We're not gonna think about systems for now, just like hard code it for now. I want the enemy to fly in, stay there for one second, and then fly back out. Just like this, whoop, stay and fly back out. And ideally, let's, like if you have this behavior, if you have this one enemy doing that, I want you to then package this as a function so I can spawn and multiple enemies, maybe flying in and flying out. Maybe every second, every two seconds, an enemy spawns in and flies in, spawns in, flies in, maybe at a random, random X position. And this is also the place where we're gonna go to this, the end zone. I, we have to figure out the cool name for this, the, the supporter zone, the supporter place. Yes, because this is the place where I say a big thank you to all the beautiful people who are supporting the show on coffee. The website is coffee.com slash lazydevs. And of course, there's like a backer reward associated with it. If you support the show on coffee, you also get to see new episodes earlier before they released on YouTube. Now, as I said, I like to show maybe in this place also you know beautiful things that people did that are in the Discord. And this time around, I wanted to show this beautiful explosion by Jamigans. Jamigans and Alice have been just like doing crazy stuff. And Jamigans created like this beautiful explosion, which I think, oh man, again, it pushes like the idea of that we had with the explosions and pushes it even further. Like this really looks like a frame from uh, Macross, like with lots of little balls exploding and uh, yeah, and definitely it also uses its own um, custom uh, sprite, custom palette, uh, which really adds to kind of like the, it really adds a lot of juice, adds a lot of like um, beautiful gradients. And then like these subtle sparks, which I also enjoy. This is just like some excellent work by Jamigans. And I'm looking forward to see what kind of game this gets turned into. This really makes me pumped. Uh, make sure if you want to see more of those beautiful things, make sure to join the Discord and see how these things develop in the future. Yes, so we have created an enemy. The enemy is moving. Uh, we have spotted a lot of problems that we have to deal with in the future. But in the next episode, we are going to make the enemy move in a smart enemy kind of like fashion. And maybe we're going to start make it shoot bullets. Let's see about that. See you next episode. Bye bye.